The reality is that great swaths of the United States and the West were originally part of Mexico. California, Nevada, parts of Utah, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado. That was all the Northern Territory of Mexico, and there were Mexican citizens living on that land before it became part of the United States, as they say in, in South Texas or in, in Northern New Mexico, Southern Colorado. We didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. Mexico was quite aware that the U.S. was coming. and that they were willing to expand themselves everywhere possible, especially in those areas of North America that formerly belonged to Spain, then to Mexico, but were empty, almost empty. It was a very tempting piece of land there. Mexico City said, well, we cannot really defend the northern part of our new republic unless we have a demographic push there. But we don't have enough people in Mexico to fill that empty space. Why don't invite foreigners? Why don't invite Catholic foreigners? The Irish that were already coming to the US, let us receive them with open arms. But at the end, they were not Irish, they were not Catholic, and they brought the slaves. Most of the settlers who moved into Texas came from the southern states. Many of them were slave owners themselves. So they naturally saw Texas as an area for expansion of slavery in America. But as more Americans moved into Texas, they suddenly began confronting the reality that the Mexican government had abolished slavery. The admission of Texas and then the Mexican-American War that followed is really a war to expand slavery in America. It was a short but vicious war. Once General Scott captures Mexico City and other U.S. troops occupy California, New Mexico, and the other northern territories of Mexico, the big question arises, how much of this territory is the United States going to keep? 